Oh, hey. Last video you guys was highly requested um, how to mask out the gun. And I know I kind of sped through most of that tutorial. So this time I want to actually like slow down and uh, I'll probably end up breaking down a lot of the elements from the last video into the different videos. So starting with masking, which is probably one of the more requested things and probably the most important out of any of the elements used in that last video. So I'm just gonna hop into the computer here and I'll, uh, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so what you're gonna want is obviously screenshots from the game. I kind of went over it briefly in the first video, um, but it's changed since the demo is not out anymore or the the beta I mean so what you want to do is go into the game and then on PC push I and you'll inspect your weapon um, on controller you can do it the same way through the gestures menu and then find a map like Nuketown where the sky looks like just a vibrant blue I find that works best in industry they use green screens um, which is kind of a blanket term blue screens are often used anything that separates the background from the subject. With Nuketown having the nice bright, vibrant blue sky, you can kind of use that as an in-game blue screen. Um, so that's what I did here. So I'm making a renders pack, hopefully get that out this month. Just a bunch of gun renders, it'll obviously be free. And you guys can use those for your thumbnails, videos, whatever you wanna use them for, I don't care. So then you just drop that into Photoshop. And depending on what your screenshot resolution is going to be, for me, I think it's, 1920 by 1080 you can check by going to canvas size so mike's 1080p uh which is fine because that's actually what you want your youtube thumbnail should be 1080 anything higher than that it's not really going to make a difference because it's so small uh there's a website i'll leave in the description where you can preview what your thumbnail will look like before actually uploading it to youtube and uh, i definitely recommend looking at that what you want to do once you have it in here if you have the newest version of photoshop and you're not using a cracked version you can go push W or, or select this uh, quick selection tool and then click select subject. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna do a pretty bang up job. Uh, you can see that it did most of the weapon, but there's like a little bit of mistakes. Uh, like for example, here, it didn't get this. Um, it kind of like messed up here, but that's because that's technically not the gun, so it did do right, but we're gonna get rid of this stuff anyways, it's so easy. Uh, and then here, it didn't even grab this, which is easy because with the direct selection tool or quick selection tool, you can just kind of drag over it, and it does a pretty good job. Um, like you can see, it, it, it kind of smart snaps to the edge of the, of the object. And that's why you want this blue screen or blue sky because it helps the AI inside of Photoshop to separate it. Um, if you don't have Photoshop or you don't have the newest version of Photoshop, there's other ways to do it. They're way more time consuming, um, but at the end of the day with how small thumbnails are, you're not gonna notice the difference in my opinion. So with that selected, you can go over here. And if you hold Alt or Option, I think on a Mac, you will like subtract from the mask. So like I can do that and then it kind of took some there. It, it, you play a game when you use this quick selection tool. You're sacrificing convenience for accuracy and precision and for a thumbnail, it's not a big deal. If you're doing a big like corporate piece, you don't want to have like this piece here because that's going to be pretty noticeable. Um, so what I would do for something like this push L on your keyboard or go to your lasso tool. And same thing, the mask is selected here still, so you can push Alt or Shift. Um, Shift will add to the mask. So if I do this, it's not gonna do anything, but if I do this, it's gonna add. So now if I were to mask this out using a layer mask, this little piece of blue sky would be in there. Obviously we don't want that, just like we don't want this. So hold Alt or Option and just kind of loosely trace it. And if you let go, you can actually get a nice straight line because it'll snap the first anchor point to this point. And that's the easiest way. Same like this little area here, gone. This little area, you don't have to be like super careful with it. You can do a rough outline and then just kind of clean it up after. And then, so I'm gonna hold shift for this one because it's not selecting that little piece of 
We got carabiner or whatever this is. And then same thing here. You just want to make sure that everything that you want to be seen is selected. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it. But like I said, and just to show you how accurate this is without doing any of these other little things, like that's it's pretty spot on. You can zoom in like 500%. You can see that there's some blue here. You can go ahead and get rid of that. With your layer mask selected, you can do Alter Option Delete, and it will fill it with black as long as you have your default colors here. If they're not default colors, just push D, and then X, and you'll get black as your background or foreground, I mean. Same thing, just go in like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, because when you zoom out to 100%, or even your print size, which is likely what it's gonna be viewed as, as a thumbnail, even smaller, you, you don't see these little details. Obviously you see the blue in the trigger and on the iron sight, but it's, it's minuscule. You're not gonna notice it. Um, but like I said, if you don't have Photoshop's newest version or you're not using Photoshop, there's GIMP, uh, Affinity, Affinity Designer, and Photo. I don't use those, so I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that they have a pen tool or a lasso tool, and that's what you'd use. So same thing, you would zoom in, push P for pen tool or whatever your program is, and you would just select, and you, you kind of don't need to be as precise as you'd think but it helps. Uh, and don't worry about your anchor points if they're messed up. Hold Alter Option, and then you can change the anchor point after you've placed it. So you just kind of do this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because you can go in and tweak it after you've even created your selection using the lasso tool like we did last time. General rule of thumb is to use less anchor points. The less anchor points you have, the nicer your selection is going to be. For a thumbnail, you can get away with a lot because it's going to be relatively small. Uh, so you can be a little bit careless with it. Um, but honestly, it's pretty quick. It's pretty easy. The AI that Photoshop has now where you can just like select a subject is a, it's awesome. It's saved me a ton of time. And then once you have it selected, just go back to your first point, right click, make selection, zero feather radius, click OK. And it did the exact same thing as before. If we mask this out, you can see that it, in fact, there is no way to tell that it was on a blue sky. Uh, and, and that's really it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and mask this stuff out real quick, get it to um, a PNG file or a transparent background. And then I'm going to show you guys how to get rid of the interface or the uh, heads up display. Okay. So once you've got it masked out, it's on a transparent background. If you see these checkers, you're good. Uh, if it's a checkered background like this, it's a transparent background. So we could even go ahead and toss an ugly red behind it. And you can see that it is in fact transparent. Anything we put underneath it will show up, but we don't care about that. We want to get rid of, well, what would have been stuff here. So let me just turn this off quickly. You'll notice that my HUD is gone, aside from what would be my equipment, my field upgrade, and my score streaks. I think that's what it is, kill streaks. Uh, you can go into custom games in multiplayer, and you can turn off basically everything. You set it to realistic or CDL. I can't remember the the proper wording, but it's in there. You can turn off all your HUD except for what is here. Um, if you play hardcore, then this looks familiar to you. It doesn't matter because this is still here and it's causing a problem, right? So if we go like this and just kind of add in what would be the shape of the gun, and we're gonna do control or command delete, and it will fill it with white if my white is my background. Uh, and that brings back what we deleted. Always work in layer masks because they're less destructive. If I make a mistake, I can just paint over it with white uh, or do a layer or like, you know, select it and fill it with white and I'll get it back. If I don't do that and I just use the eraser tool or just delete it, 
then it's gone. I can't get it back. I have to re-import the photo and then do all of my work again. It doesn't take long, but when you're working on a big project or say you're doing like 10 thumbnails for a YouTuber, um, it adds up, every second counts. Once you have it back, so say it looks like this, it's like, it's not a big deal. And in a thumbnail, you probably wouldn't see it. But again, I'm doing a lot of these for a render pack. And I wouldn't give this to somebody even for free because it looks like ass. So you select it. Make sure you're selected on the image itself and not the layer mask. Do Shift F5 and it will bring up this fill option. Make sure that in the drop down menu you're selected on content aware. And I, you can leave content aware or uh, sorry, color adaptation on and then hit OK. And it fills it in. It just kind of like using the AI that Photoshop has, the magic, it fills it in and it isn't even noticeable that they're like, I mean, there's a notch here and it, that obviously isn't there when we do the content aware. But if you really, really wanted to, you could use the stamp tool and you can like kind of fabricate it. Like you can paint it in. If you really, really wanted to go the extra mile to get that re added realism, by all means, go ahead. But for this instance, for this thumbnail, you're not gonna notice it and you're gonna be putting in way too much work for something that's not gonna get noticed. If this was a client piece, I might do it because as you can see, it didn't take too long. And when we zoom out to 100%, it looks great. You wouldn't know it's there. Uh, especially to somebody who doesn't have the designer eye or an artist eye, whatever. Uh, they wouldn't know that. They would think that this was an actual render from the game, which is what you want. But I mean, yeah, guys, like this is really simple stuff. Um, hopefully I covered everything that you guys needed to know about masking. Like I said, I'm going to release a this pack by the end of the month. Um, February is a short month, so that gives me a little bit of a excuse to get off my ass and actually do it. Um, but we'll see. It's life's busy, so... Um, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if there's any other questions, anything else you want to know about masking, let me know and I'll answer them in the comments. Um, for the next video, I'm probably going to look into like how to add effects to your weapons and stuff for your thumbnails. I was going to cover it in this one, but it's getting pretty long, so I'm not going to bother. Um, but I'll probably upload another one either later this week or next week, hopefully. Uh, yeah, guys, thanks for checking it out. Like and subscribe. It helps the channel. I know you hear that a hundred times, but it really does. Yeah, thanks for watching.